since it is rather cold, not so much here at the moment, but just in general, all over Europe, you have quite deep temperatures. Today it's like minus five or so, so it really feels like spring since we had like minus 25, close to minus 30 degrees. So those kind of fat ass jackets were kind of useful, at least in certain situations. I personally, I'm not a big fan of wearing thick jackets, really only when I'm standing on a sled or, any, or something similar to that, when I'm really like standing for a long extended period of time because even though you're kind of moving a little bit on the sled, but if you really want to save some energy, it's really necessary to actually like preserve a lot of energy, you know, so then thick jackets come in place. Usually what you see when people are wearing thick jackets, it's like city folk who just run around with them, you know, and underneath they just wear a t-shirt or whatever because it's like five degrees plus outside or whatever. That's not what most of those jackets are actually meant for, you know. So bear that a little bit in mind. It's more than good enough to just wear like two layers instead of just t-shirt and a fat ass jacket over it, you know, and paying like six, seven hundred euros or whatever for a down jacket. It's ridiculous. But regardless of that, so I'm going to show you two different, not only styles of jackets, but uh, down uh, fat ass jackets, you know, puff jackets or whatever you want to call it, but also um, their usage, you know, in different situations. So we start with the Canada Goose, Canada Goose jacket. I actually got this one when I was living on Svalbard for a horrendously cheap price. I think I paid 60 euros or something like that or 80 euros or something like that for it it's a size um for me it fits it's like an xl you know kind of like um size it is a little bit worn down it was when i got it but for me it doesn't really matter since i'm not really wearing it so much it is a normal quote unquote normal down jacket that people love and it usually comes for like six seven hundred euros um the the YKK uh, zippers are excessively big because they're actually designed for big expeditions and also like for Antarctica use, you know, when you're working there in the um, um, in the fields, sort of. Vertical flaps here. Um, I, around eight years ago, when I got my first thick down jacket, it was a the North Face jacket, I forgot what it was called, but I got it also like for a super cheap price. It was like orangish, which no one really liked, so that's why they still had it. But the year after, they redesigned the jacket. And instead of Velcro, they put um, those metal clips, you know, those, those button kind of thingy that you press together. Those are terrible for cold conditions. They snap. And even if, when they're icing up or whatever, you're ripping them apart, they just get destroyed. So they destroy fabric. The reason why they actually changed it is because they, of course, wanted to appeal for, for city folk who just wear their jacket open and the male side maybe started rubbing on the inside of the material, you know, so they had like returns and all that kind of stuff, which is ridiculous because that's not what they're meant for. But that's just unfortunately what it is, you know. Velcro is super good, but it also has the downside that it wears out after some time. So those ones are actually pretty worn. This function is super good. You have an, like a kind of like an inner sleeve sort of to actually prevent you from getting water, uh, water or snow in it. Uh, it's also quite nice when you just wear it like this, you know, so to have a little bit more extra warm. If you don't really want to necessarily wear like thick gloves or whatever, especially when you need to work as a mechanic or whatever you do, you know, it's good to have this. Have a thin liner of gloves, you know, and then you can start doing stuff. With like small parts, you kind of wear thick gloves, it doesn't work. And I, obviously, I'm also the kind of person who doesn't really like gloves, that's why I don't wear them now. Otherwise, you have a ton of um, pockets. It's always good to have inner pockets. Um, those ones are, it's only one really, this small one here, so it would have been nice to have like it, of course, you also have like some down here, you know, that are a little bigger, but it's um, sometimes 
I wish to have like on the other side as well since you don't have any pockets here but it doesn't really matter so much because uh, you should have like all the layers underneath you should have pockets there to actually keep stuff cold uh, warm sorry you know when it's extremely cold this inner side here it doesn't really warm up that much you know it's the layers underneath that actually keeps the warm so this one is actually just insulating this function here to actually strap this around your belt to keep the jacket in place I never used it so it's just preference I guess I don't like to have something that locks me up here so I really just wear it like closed up the hood really good actually but the coyote um, fur rough here caused a lot of controversy due to the fact that it's coyote you know uh, PETA and all they all like kind of boycotted it and whatnot which is a fair point because this coyote fur doesn't really do much you know it's um, if you really go in the cold conditions you really need something that is bigger you know like triple the size like like this long hair to actually help you trap the trap the uh, air from coming in you know so like when it's really really windy and all so this one is not really that useful but what's really important is that it's a long hood that you can really strap tight you know and actually uh, prevent you from getting uh, getting wind and all in your face that's why I also don't wear face masks because I wear hoods all the time to actually prevent me from getting like super much uh, snow and wind into my face. Pretty awesome to do that like this. All right. Otherwise, Canada Goose, if everybody knows, is a down jacket. The outside material is, is extremely rough. Uh, that is good for in terms of like uh, durability and long lasting uh, ability you know but it has the downside is it doesn't really compress that well well and also it is heavy you can really feel it when you wear it and that brings us to the other one the other jacket that i have oh yeah a little side note this little handle actually really handy to have you can hang you know it's a coat hanger or whatever because if you have those small little flimsy kind of things they just rip off right away so this one is a really really sturdy um, connector which this jacket kind of also offers really really good to have this is uh, plus minus null it's a Swedish brand actually um, the their office is close by here it's in order um, little side note, see those pads, also from that company. Um, little disclaimer, I got a really, really good discount on all that kind of stuff. I actually get those pants replaced because the other pants beforehand, the older models, in case you ever want to buy a used one, don't buy the old models. Uh, that material here was really shitty. It started breaking up quite easily and uh, it doesn't really last that long. Versions are much, much better. I'm wearing those now for a couple months every single day, no problem whatsoever. All right, this one is a completely different style. Because it's a Parker. And what is also, it's synthetic. There is always like a little bit of controversy that synthetic is not really that warm compared to, to down. Well, yes, it has a point, but when it comes to this jacket, it's not. This one is extremely warm uh, and super light, which is also like a counterpoint like what you usually have, like down jackets are really, really lighter and whatnot. But the material is also much weaker, you know? It's a, it's a little bit of a mix, you know, you have like this really, really thin kind of um, polyester material that you always like have also when, when you just have your, your thin jackets and whatever underneath the puffs and all, that kind of material. And then here it's a little bit more sturdier material, but 
still not really that durable, you know, compared to some other stuff. The solution to uh, keep you from getting snow and all that kind of stuff in it is is a flex strap. Works really well. I actually like it. This jacket in general is a little bit longer in the arms, so you can actually do it like this. Pocket-wise, only outside pockets. It's very, very limited, you know. I mean, when it comes to Canada goose, you can stuff a lot of shit in it. But uh, it's actually, when you run with tourists, you can, with a 100% guarantee, um, expect that you're gonna have some tissues or whatever shit in the pockets if you actually rent out your stuff. So uh, you don't really need all those pockets because if you want to keep something warm, you have it inside somewhere else. And if you have it outside, I always have gloves and everything in those pockets. So I don't necessarily need those here. I sometimes have like a camera in here or whatever if I really need it. Otherwise, I don't really have anything. Uh, this one has two hoodies actually. This one is a warm hoodie. It's uh, lightly insulated. It's really, really nice actually because uh, they have an, what they call insulator parker. It's a slim parker, has the same hood like this one. I used to have it, but unfortunately I had a little bit incident with fire and uh, it got burned. Uh, now I have something else, which I'm gonna show you in another episode. But since it is a parker, the advantage is you have less zipper and less um, body heat that goes out and less wind that can come in, if you know what I mean. So this is actually a nice system. Um, to prevent you from like getting like super stiff and tight or whatever, you have side zippers that you can get down. I usually have them open since uh, when you're on a dog sled in particular, that's when I wear those kind of jackets, is you want to paddle with the dogs a little bit, you know, help them to get up a hill or whatever, and then have it a little bit open. So, like I said, for me, this is just like an additional layer just to stay a little bit warmer. So, hoodies again, this one, and then you have that one. And if you tighten it up, you also see you have quite a good uh, wind protection. Uh, however, you don't have a, um, a fur wrap on it, and this one is a little bit too soft, kind of, to wanna to wanna have like a really really oh. big um, dogs are playing uh, to have a really big um, fur wrap on it. Uh, there was one dude uh, from Sweden here who had this jacket on on the Yukon Quest in minus 55 or something like that. It's funny that he was the um, Everybody else, you know, all the Alaskans wear fur wraps. He was the only one, didn't, had the jacket on. He went through it, no problem, but he was the only one with a frostbite on his nose. So, you can see uh, where the fur wrap actually comes in handy. All right. Otherwise, super lightweight, compressible really nicely. Uh, you can fit it in about a 12 liter compressible bag, you know. I had it in a 15 liter one. And you, it was like three fourths or something in there, you know, so you can get a 12 liter one and you're perfectly fine. If you really want to go out in the mountains or whatever and just use it as an extra layer, which you can't do with a Canada Goose jacket, no fucking way. It doesn't work, you know, it, it's just way too big. You, you can't really compress it that well. Cleaning obviously is much lighter with this one since you can just wash it normally and just hang it up, like what you do with a synthetic backpack. Um, you can't do that with a Canada Goose jacket. So there is pros and cons on both jackets. Now, the crucial part. When it's windy, it actually doesn't matter which jacket you wear in terms of like, it's just preference, you know, and lightweight jackets are always better, you know. Uh, but this one, don't wear it when you snowmobile. I did that, doesn't work. Because what happens is, since the material here is, you know, you don't have any additional um, pockets, you know, stitchings or whatever, it's really just open. So once you hit um, a lot of snow, a uh, lot of wind, it just compresses the whole um, um, insulation down. And then you don't have any insulation whatsoever. I was freezing my ass up in minus 35, minus 40 on a snowmobile. 
uh, driving couldn't hide behind the windshield because it was a more modern one, you know, uh, doesn't work. Canada Goose jacket, no problem whatsoever. It's so stiff, it's such a big, bulky material, you know, nothing happens in that case. This one, no way, not on snowmobiles. Other than that, it's amazing how light this is, uh, how well it actually works. Yeah, that's pretty much it. If you have some questions, let me know in the comments. Um, both jackets are really awesome. I quite often go for the Canada Goose jacket simply because it's a little bit more durable when you work with dogs. You know, they can just jump up, you know, and make some scratches in, in the material, whatever. Happens to my, my slimmer pups quite often, which is a pain in the ass. That's why I actually prefer synthetic stuff. Uh, you don't have to worry about down flying over or all over the place, but I'm also changing a little bit in, in that so It's always good to have different kind of stuff, you know and testing out But usually what I get is like used stuff or whatever, you know Because I don't have that much money and I'd also don't want to spend so much money on stuff so I tend to if you have seen my my old Fiat Evan jacket it has a ton of holes in it, lost a lot of down because I just patched it up everywhere, you know, so that's usually what happens with my stuff. And then when it's done, it's really done and you can just throw it in the, in the trash pretty much. All right, guys, that's it for me today. Have a good one. Go outside. If you have questions, put it in the comments and have a good one. guys.